Most tax pros leave a message. It's Jane. I'm moving on to a TurboTax expert who beat your price. Adam Devine, tell him how I feel. Hey, tax pro, she's been thinking twice. Just believe TurboTax will beat your price. This is a tax break. Uh. Switch to a TurboTax live expert and we'll beat what you paid your pro last tax season. Make the switch at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. TurboTax full service only. Sign up by 12-20-2024 and file by 4-1-2025. Full details at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. This is the sound of your ride home with dad after he caught you vaping. Awkward, isn't it? Most vapes contain seriously addictive levels of nicotine and disappointment. Know the real cost of vapes. Brought to you by the FDA. Age of Radio. Hey, everybody. This is Steve. I just want to let you know that for all the latest on our podcast, uh, hit us up at EILF Movies. That's everything I learned from movies on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, we're also on Patreon if you want to check that out. But our homepage is with the Age of Radio Network at ageofradio.org slash everything I learned from movies. And if you're looking for some amazing art, check out my wife's Etsy page at untidyvenus.etsy.com. All kinds of great stuff there. Also, follow us at PodCartFest, that's P-O-D-C-A-R-T-F-E-S-T, for our periodic art and podcasting festival that we're going to be hosting. It's uh, it's actually pretty cool. Check it out. So yeah, on that note, let's get to the show. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes and gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy With your friend Steve and Izzy And I'm Izzy. And this is Everything I Learned From Movies. And tonight... Oh, tonight. Can you hear my dog crunching his treats in the background? Of course you can. Because, (laughs) babe, we are finishing off Jun Jitsu. Hiya! With 1976's Death Machine. Yeah! (laughs) Oh, but babe, before we get into this one... Oh. I don't know about you. I'm very sober. Oh, well, let's try to change that. Uh, let's go this one first from Wasatch Brewery. We have their SLC Salt Lime Cerveza. Yeah. Lager with salt and lime. 
Uh, lightly salted perfection, our salt lime cerveza is a crisp, refreshing lager with a hint of lime that will transport you to a warm tropical beach in the middle of SLC. <laughs> what? Uh, slut. Slut. <laughs> salt, salt, salt Lake, Lake Utah. Utah. <laughs> 5% alcohol by volume in my tip. Oh, it's top. Nice. And Le Pou. Oh. oh, yeah. That is a beautiful, very, very pale straw color beer. It's a beautiful white foamy head that's dissipating fairly quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. It smells like lime. Yeah. Yeah, definitely mm. lime right up on the nose. Mm-hmm. So, Steve, you're not a huge fan of salt lime I know. Uh, cervezas, are you? Yeah, this is a, a little a little higher than I usually like in my uh, my lagers with the, the salt lime. Like the... Yeah, just a little too acidic for me. Like, I think after a glass of this, it'd be pretty down. But uh, as for the overall flavor, yeah, it's not bad. Like, it's, yeah, just a little too, a little too limey for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much of a limey for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why are your well, worst people called limeys? Let's look it up. <laughs> okay, because they're, cause they're Liam Neeson's. Oh, because they're Liam Neeson's. And they're limes. <laughs> Speaking if you of rearrange Liam, it spells lime. Lima, yeah, lima. <laughs> lima? Oh, maybe they're lima beans? I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of bad accents, 1976's Death Machine. Yeah. Uh, babe, do you remember your first time watching this movie? It was with you. That's right. It was. God, it was like maybe a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those like we were watching. I think we. Oh, that's right. Uh, I'd heard of the uh, Grain Bin had podcast oh, had done an episode. And I was like, I gotta check this shit out. But yeah, from writer director Paul Kiriazzi. Who's he, Steve? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, you may know him from the tournament. This dogs lapping gently in the background. <laughs> uh, Can you get? Does that pick up? Of course it does. Okay. <laughs> uh, the weapons of death. <clears throat> In San Francisco's Chinatown, a band of thugs kidnaps a girl for a large Chinese gang. Does that sound familiar, babe? Uh, <laughs> Coming next week. Uh, John Carpenter, you hack? No, I don't know. Back to I did Ninja Busters, which sounds great. <laughs> ninja Busters. One Way Out. Wait, Steve, is a Ninja Buster like a weird sex move? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Only one way to find out. Coming next week, no. Yeah, One Way Out. Uh, Omega Cop in 1990. In the future, a cop goes after a gang of slave traders, uh, starring Adam West, <laughs> uh, but he is not Omega Cop. I'm assuming he's Whoa. the uh, slave trader. Already? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. You see, a pimp's love is rather different <laughs> from that of a square. Uh, and then 2018's Forbidden Power. Uh, I think it's a porno, but it's won 22 awards. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like the AVNs or some shit. But uh, um, he also stars in this movie, babe, as uh, Cop Whose Car Gets Stolen. Spoilers. <laughs> oh my god, spoiler, a cop's car gets stolen. I know, right? In a movie called Death Machines. Oh, but story and screenplay comes from Joe Walders. Who's he, Steve? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, he wrote this, and that's it. <laughs> One and done, baby. <laughs> One and done. <laughs> but of course, starring in this movie, Ron Marchini as White Death Machine. Who's he? Uh, he's the, the White pro- Death Machine. <laughs> that's right, the white one. Uh, he's the producer of this movie. <laughs> hey, how about that? Uh, he also starred as Dragon in Dragon's Quest. <gasps> Steve Parrish in... Ninja Warriors, Forgotten Warrior, Jungle Wolf, and Return Fire. <laughs> Apparently, it's a series of movies where All he's right. trying to be like a like a Dirty Harry or something. But you know, ninja. And as John Travis in Omega Cop and Karate Cop. That's right. There's a Karate Cop out there too. Karate Cop. <laughs> uh, when are we just gonna do Cop Month, Steve? So many. Do some Axe Cop, Karate Cop, uh, Omega Cop, yeah. <laughs> Ninja Cop. Have we done Ninja Cop for our podcast? I, is there a Ninja Cop? 
Wait. I feel like you just made that shit up. What's the one with the guy with the long hair? Oh, Samurai Cop. Samurai Cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you see how I could get Samurai Cop and Ninja Cop confused? No, they're two completely different things. Okay. See, babe, if you look at my PowerPoint Wait, presentation Wait, what about Shogun here, Cop? <laughs> uh, see, we've already, uh, see, we've already done RoboCop 2 and 3. Maybe we just gotta go straight to the reboot. <laughs> Also starring in this movie, we have Michael Chong as Asian Death Machine. Who's he? Uh, he has 19 credits, including this, To Live and Die in L.A., Hill Street Blues, Knight Rider, Kinjite, colon, Forbidden Subjects, Rapid Fire, hey, that's the uh, hey. Brandon Lee one, yeah. uh, Snapdragon, Nick of Time. Hey, when are we going to do that? <laughs> Probably around the same time we also do Enemy of the State. Yes! <laughs> Uh, we also have Joshua Johnson as Black Death Machine. Yeah. Uh, you may know him from The Tournament, This, and Weapons of Death. That is it. Just those three. Yeah, like the first three movies for this writer-director, and then that was it. Yeah. All right. But also starring in this movie, oh. Marie Hanjo as Madame Lee. Ooh, who's she, Steve? Babe, this is going to blow your fucking mind. Oh my mind. She was in this <gasps> and a short the previous year. That is it. That's it? <laughs> of course it's it. <laughs> You've seen this movie. With that, with that tal- raw talent? Right. That sex appeal? Uh, let's see. Ron Ackerman as Lieutenant Clay Forrester. Who's he, Steve? Babe, he's been in two movies. And guess what? It's this. And he was the police chief in Low Blow. Yes, the low blow we did on the grind bin. Oh, oh. Steve, we could do a whole month Two of, for two. <laughs> just this list here, we could do a whole month of, uh, or do a whole game, actually, of, uh, is it a porn movie or is it a regular movie? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Kinjite, forbidden, uh, what was it, forbidden pleasures or something? <laughs> low blow. Ninja busters. <laughs> is it a, Yeah. <laughs> Busting makes me feel good. Steve, we have a new game. <laughs> and babe, I also realized uh, possibly the main actor of this movie I didn't have on here. We have John Lowe as Frank. Who's he, Steve? Well, he wasn't in much, but he was in an episode of The Avengers, yeah, back in the 60s. Uh, like Red Cap, this, and he played Pimp in Outlaw Force. <laughs> It's a uh, Frank Stallone movie, apparently. <laughs> and in 1994, he was drug buyer in Murder at Midnight. Yeah. And let's see if we have the nurse on here. What was the nurse's name? I don't know. Oh, here we are, nurse. <laughs> uh, nurse, played by Mary Carol Fredrickson. Um, and, babe, hold on to your fucking pants. I'm not even wearing them. This is the only thing she's been in. What? I know. I know. That talent. Right. That raw sex appeal. I don't know why. We were denied. I'm, I'm sure she immediately killed herself after this movie for she had just peaked. I have no one left to envy. <laughs> she envies us for having someone left to, to envy. Yep. But babe, how did we watch this one? How did we watch this? Well, guys, it's available on Tubi, Plex, and Sling TV. But before you run over to Tubi, be warned. That shit is... I, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. The sound was off. It was the bad. The picture was, like, really zoomed in. Yeah, uh, it was, like, distorted. Like, like yeah. it was, like, Tubi had it cropped wrong. Yeah. That's right. We got, like, two minutes into it. Yep. But yeah, the opening goodness. credits, we were like, uh, this is wrong. <laughs> thank goodness we had a backup. That's right. We went to Plex. And the Plex copy, eh, not bad. <laughs> like, it's exactly okay. what you expect. The ratio is a little weird, but it's, at least it, like, is on the screen. And... It was meh. The, the audio was not great. But well, I it... suspect it might have been the source material. Yeah, it was, this was, like, pulled from a VHS that someone had in, <laughs> I don't know, in, in a leaky closet. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but, yeah, we started off, oh, guys, we start off with this incredible painting of a I don't know, a pyramid or something with faces on it and like opens up and yeah, I love, well, it's showing like whoever's starring in the movie, it's just showing the different angles of this like, you know, matte painting kind of thing or whatever. Um, but yeah. And then we also, the music, it starts off with like wind, like, 
like, but it's like wind, like from a sleep machine or whatever. But then it starts the uh, Ninja Gaiden music you're gonna hear like 18 times in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely just like 16 bit. Yeah, audio. it totally. <laughs> Hell, like, I don't think 16. I think it's like a uh, four bit or whatever Atari <laughs> was. You know, but uh. Yeah, then, uh, I don't know, we, we cut to the grounds of some palatial estate, and uh, we see some guys squaring off, you know, we had a guy with swords going to get against a guy with, uh, I don't know the name of the weapon, but it's like the, the triple nunchucks, like the, it's like the th- three medium-sized sticks kind of held together with chains. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're fighting on a bridge, and you got another guy f- with a sword fighting a guy with a spear on, like, they're like standing on rocks in a river kind of thing like little stepping stones or whatever um and there was a third one but um oh that's right the the third one it was just like i guess on another bridge it was just two guys like duking it out without weapons um until the guy like did uh, there's like you know the two guys like showing off like you know doing like whoa without the weapons and stuff and then one of them just pulls out a gun and pops the other guy in the fucking head. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the other guys win or whatever. And it's like, oh, congratulations. You two have win. <laughs> you, or, or sorry, you three have uh, are, are winners. Please come this way. Um, and uh, we see Madam Lee, this uh, lady, so I'm saying, like, they'll do nicely. Yes. Steve, how would you describe Madam Lee? All right, guys. Picture someone named Madam Lee. You know, Asian mm-hmm. brothel. She's the madam. Yeah, she's the uh, madam of like an old west brothel. This wig. Oh, it's This not. is like a reject geisha wig, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> and it's like three sizes too big for her head or something. Like it's a, yeah. it's a big, uh, a big wig. <laughs> it's a big wig. Ah! But, uh, you know, she wanders into this this dark room where there's this mysterious fellow in this, like, I don't know, warehouse-sized room or whatever. If all the lights turned out, he's sitting at a desk and she's like, They do nicely. We have trained them to be, you know, the most, the best programmed assassins. And he's like, that's great. And it's just this <laughs> guy sitting there in the dark. You never see his face, but you just see, like, smoke emanating like he's got a cigarette in his mouth or whatever. <laughs> And by the way, Steve is not not being racist. No, this is how. If she anything, sounds. I am being kind. He's being kind. <laughs> it sounds like someone who has an accent playing up their accent, like she's going hard. Yeah. Uh, but the guy's like, you know, the mysterious guy's like, well, there's one last test. Here, kill this guy. It will be done. <laughs> and so then, okay. We cut to this guy who is Mr. Uh, his name is Mr. T. It's like Mr. Tiliani or something like that. But everybody calls him Mr. T. And it's it's like George Lazenby and the man from Hong Kong. Like like yeah. picture just, you know, 70s guy with the mustache wearing a robe, just hanging out the poolside with all these topless chicks or whatever. And we just cut to him and he's getting a call on the phone. And he's like, hello, what? no <laughs> what about the plutonium yeah no <laughs> like hey he's like oh hey yeah i want to talk to you about a job i need you to kill this dojo guy uh what the fuck was his name like hung low or some shit and also that uh bank vp all right cool bye and so then we cut to a guy like in a cadillac right and <laughs> he, he just like pulls up this building with like a briefcase or whatever And just walks up to the top. We instantly see him, like, go up to the roof. And he starts pulling out this rifle and, like, you know, assembling it and all that. And just pointing down. And we see, like, through the the sniper scope or whatever. Mm, Yeah. Uh, he's just following this like Asian guy who's just like walking through and, you know, it's like through the trees and stuff. So he's like, ah, I can't quite get a good shot. And then randomly there's these three guys that just kind of, like, open the door to the roof behind him. (laughs) And he's like, hey, hey, what the fuck are you guys doing here? And, and it's it's the, the three wait, wait, winners. Give the yoga voice. <laughs> the fuck are you guys doing here? <laughs> no. But, uh, <laughs> what the fuck? This roof's occupado. <laughs> Go get your own. Where's the doorman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, it's some bitch. 
but yeah, it, it's the three winners, quote unquote, from before. Uh, because apparently they've been programmed to be like zombie assassins that only zombie listen to Madame Lee or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, as I said in the beginning, there's the White Death Machine, who's mm-hmm. the producer of the movie. Just yes. picture Milk Toast Man. Uh, yeah, he looks like every white guy from these like 70s, 80s karate movies. He kind of looks like Chuck Norris when Chuck Norris didn't have the beard. Or the mustache He's, or anything. Like, this guy he, he just has that, that hair, that, like, yeah, 70s yeah, hair. Yeah, I can see it. I don't know. This guy was, like, shorter and, yeah, like, Shorter and whiter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, but, like, a co- Like, he's not fat by any means. Yeah. But he's, like, like built like a Coke can. Yeah. Sturdy, we'll say. Yeah. Uh, and Sturdy then, German built. And then there's the Asian death machine who looks mm-hmm. like, uh... Yeah, yeah, he just... Yeah, it looks like Asian death machine. <laughs> I don't know. There's not really... <laughs> He kind of looks like the guy he's trying to shoot right now. So it's like, oh, wait, how'd you get up here? No. <laughs> but, <laughs> roar, roar. <laughs> and then Cue the Spider-Man meme. <laughs> yeah, right. And then there's Black Death Machine that kind of looks like, um, I don't know, normal-sized Black Dynamite. Like He, yeah. he, he looks like um, Black Klansman. Oh yeah, like, kind of like yeah. black hand, like a like Lakeith Stanfield or yes. whatever, or you know Denzel's kid, like one of the like yes. Afro oh, little, yeah. little mustache and stuff. He, yeah, yeah. They all look exactly like you imagine. Yeah, them. yeah, <laughs> yeah. When <laughs> when I describe the characters' names in this movie, you're like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen. If you haven't seen a, a karate or kung fu movie before, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, they basically just walk up to this guy with the rifle. And he's like, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you? Pick him up. And they toss him over the side. Uh, and then, meanwhile, we go back down to where, you know, his Cadillac was, like, double parked or whatever right by the front door. And you see a meter maid, like, writing him a ticket. And then, boom, dummy kill right on the fucking hood. And she's like, oh, God! Oh, yeah! <laughs> uh, so then we cut back to Mr. T, who's getting a call. What? Accident? How the hell did that happen? <sighs> Well, I guess we'll try again. You know, it's one of those, like, one-sided conversations where you don't even hear the... That kind of shit. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. It's, like, in the middle of the night, too, when he's getting this call. Because there's this girl, again, of course, topless or whatever. She's, like, walking out the the door of the bedroom or whatever out to the pool. And uh, he turns around and goes, Hey! Get your ass back in bed! <laughs> so she does, you know. Uh, so then we uh, cut to the, I guess, the bank VP. He's, like, jogging or whatever. And, uh, I don't know, the, the world's most inconspicuous assassin is, you know, driving his goddamn land yacht, like, <laughs> in a public park. Right. And he, like, parks next to the jogging trail. Oh, babe, they're not trying and... to be secret about no, these that's... assassinations. Uh, uh, in fact, low-key, I think they want as much publicity as possible. They, they must, because he also, like, steps out. Yeah, he's, like... I don't know, 20 feet from the fucking <laughs> jogging trail or whatever. He steps out with, you know, this obvious assassin's rifle, but it's like covered with a blanket. <laughs> but it's like four feet long or whatever. And so then he like props on top of the car, you know, like, you know, using it as the the tripod or whatever, like the hood of the car or whatever. But then we see behind him another car being even more of an asshole coming over the hill in the park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting to see like like somebody throwing a frisbee and a dog <laughs> crossing their path, but but uh, the three death machines get out and like oh shit, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna toss them onto the jogging trail or something? Hey, what did they do? What did they do? They pop that trunk. Oh, that's right. And they pull out a motherfucking rocket launcher. Woo! And uh, yeah, so. Yeah, you know, that, that theme music starts up. Mew, 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 mew. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and then we cut back to Mr. T. <laughs> what? <laughs> Blown up? Who's doing this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's right. And then it's like uh, the, the guy calling him on the other end. We see him because he's calling from like a payphone. He's like, I don't know, but that's two assassins kill, and I think I'm about getting the fuck out of here. And then... <laughs> While he's talking, you know, it's going back between him and Mr. T, we see this, uh, this fucking caterpillar, like a, like a steamroller almost, or whatever, just one of those caterpillars just, like, slowly advancing like it's, I don't know, Austin Powers or some shit. (laughs) And the guy finally realizes when it's, like, ten feet away, and he's like, what, 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 and... And then we cut to Mr. T on the other end, and we hear the screaming, like, on the other end of the phone, like, ah, oh my god, ah! 
<laughs> and we see he's like rolled over the phone booth and he's still listening on the other end. I'm like, man, you just couldn't destroy those phones back in the day. <laughs> no, you could not. <laughs> Landlines are durable. How come we went from like, we went from those, like phone booths that could be hit by an actual caterpillar and not be phased yeah. to Nokia. They could well, be hit by a real life caterpillar. <laughs> No, no, no! Like, like, then we like a the, butterfly. Then we went to the Nokia bricks oh, that yeah. you also could not destroy. You could probably hit with a caterpillar, and they yeah, you could fight. load them in a rocket launcher, and pretty much. Take somebody out to like the iPhones, where if you look at them wrong, they just crack. Nope. <laughs> oh no! How did my shit get hacked anyway? Oh, did did you put it in your pocket next to a Kleenex? Oh, it's not designed for that kind of impact. Right. So yeah, Mister T <sighs> hangs up. He's like, "Oh shit! What am I gonna do now?" But then, ring, ring, ring. Who is it? Hello, Mr. Taniano, or whatever the fuck his name was. <laughs> it's me, Madam Lee. We will be handling our assassination in the city. <laughs> you must be dear from me. And he's like, what? Who the fuck? All right, fine. <laughs> fine, I'll come meet you then. And then we cut to an airfield, and we see, you know, the fucking biplane or whatever coming in. <laughs> uh, uh, what was that? The, uh, Cessna? I don't know. It's just, it's just a... Like a two-person plane, you know what the yeah, fuck I'm talking like a about. Kit box. Yeah, yeah, and it just we see it landing, you know, in real time because you know we got to make the 80 minutes. Um, run time, run time, <laughs> run time. And then there's like a driver sitting there waiting for him. Takes him to Madam Lee. Oh, that's right. It's his driver, uh, Mike. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess Mister T was on vacation or whatever, so he's coming back to town, and Mike's there to pick him up, and he's like, uh, uh, they, they like get to Madam Lee's mansion. Um, yes and it, it, it's like it's like made out of brick it's like a brick mansion like it's a brick i, I don't even know what era House. that would have been made in because it's like red bricks and white top but it, yeah i don't know it's kind of oh. a weird design yeah but, but anyway you get there and uh you know the, the driver mike I, I swear to god he looks just like mr t so i was going to be like look right look you're my fucking nephew you just you know <laughs> I, do I your fucking job and guy. yeah <laughs> But, but yeah, he's basically just like, hey, uh, do you know, I, I'm just going to talk to this lady. You just do your fucking job and stay with the car. Don't go off and uh, be jerking it at the, uh, oh my God, the strip club like you were last time or some shit. And he's like, <laughs> I was just going to go get some lunch and come right back. He's like, all right, well, have your ass back here in an hour. You know, that kind of thing, right? So uh, Mr. T goes in and he meets Madam Lee. And as I've written down, this is not the best voice recording ever because she's like, what? Uh, th there's like eight scenes where she's like descending the staircase. I had no idea what she was saying in any of these scenes, by the way. Yep. Uh, I not mean, one, not a clue. Like, like, cause it, like she was like muffled Yeah. and with but, the heavy accent and the fake accent. She was saying something like, uh, it, like, you know, our, our assassins are the finest in the business and you know, you must still through us, Mr. T, or whatever, but it's like, Assassin's are the finest in our PSA. Assassin's Thank you for playing that recording, Steve. <laughs> Get that drop. <laughs> uh, so then we cut to Mike. Uh, you know, he, he went to the Italian restaurant to get some lunch or whatever, and he's talking with Tony, the owner of this Italian place. And Tony is, uh, basically, his name should be Mario Mario. Because he's just like, oh, then, you know, try the spaghetti. I make, I make it the special sauce. Everybody wants to buy my sauce. And I tell them, no, this is my grandma's sauce. And if I lose my sauce, then I lose my business. Because everybody wants to come here just for the sauce. <laughs> and, and and even Mike's like, what? why are you talking to me? Like, what what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> but, uh. But yeah, he, 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 he's Tony's basically hovering over him like, no, try the sauce. Tell them it's not the best sauce in all of the world. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I guess it's okay. Now, go now, please. Okay, I, I go I go now. Ah. But then, <laughs> so he's got this plate with like a big pile of spaghetti or whatever. <laughs> but he takes like one bite and he's like, wait, what the hell? And there's this <laughs> fucking... This like wax red wax Buddha statue like in the middle. I, I don't. I think it's supposed to be rock of some sort, but I don't know what flat know. red plastic looking rock other than it wax. looks like terracotta. Yeah, sure, but it's in the middle of the spaghetti. He's like, "What, T Tony? Tony, get your ass back here! What? Th there's this fucking plastic Buddha in my food." And he's like, "Oh no! Uh, I go on the back and find out how this could happen." Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to find good work these days good workers ah. and and babe 
the scene that happens next. Yeah. You remember the movie The Car that came a year after yeah. this? Yeah. Because Mike's sitting next to the window, and it's just been black. Like, uh, obviously, <laughs> there's not much of any. Nothing like, like this was shot in a warehouse. Like, there's no yeah. lights indicating anything across the street or yeah, ambient like, light outside anything. It's just black back like, there. It could have just been a harbor for all we knew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> but then we see, bing, two little headlights turn on in the distance. And they're coming faster, faster, faster towards this window. And Mike's just like, wait, what the? What? It, it, like, everybody <laughs> in the restaurant's like, what the hell's happening? Like, they're already, like, freaking out. As it comes blasting through the wall, yeah! this truck comes through the window. <laughs> <clears throat> These assassins are all very subtle, Steve. Yeah. By the way, my next note is, by the way, it's night now. Because... <laughs> Has pay us. Because, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go grab some lunch and I'll be right back. It's night outside. Because mm-hmm. the headlights and everything. And blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, then we <laughs> cut back to um, uh, Madame Lee's place. and uh, <laughs> The mansion. Yeah, the mansion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the grotto? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's, uh, you know, they're... they're, oh, they're no, she's they're, saying more words yeah, I yeah, can't understand. Yeah, the, yeah she, uh, Mr. T's, like, on the other side, like, the dinner table. And, like, the assistant guy's, like, serving them food or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she's, like... You know, you have to work with us and blah, blah. You must work with us, Mr. T. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Look, I just have these, like, two guys I need to kill, blah, blah, uh, But I really don't care who does it as long as these guys get killed. But then, um, but then, I, I mean, he's like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I do things my own way, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. And then, like, the uh, Black Death Machine comes in with a little <laughs> basket. Yeah. Oh, shit, that's right. We, we also, uh, sorry, I forgot a very important part. When the truck cr- comes through the fucking window or whatever. Mm-hmm. The, the all three death machines come out and oh shit I forgot and, they were in there. and that's right one of them has a basket the other one has a sword <laughs> and we just kind of see the guy with the sword Shwing. swing it and so then we cut to the dinner scene and yes. now the, we have the head the basket. And, then, yeah, and then the basket's presented opens it up and it's Mike's head and I like how Mr. T is just kind of like alright well played you know Touché. <laughs> and then he grabs his gun and shoots the fucking butler that's been serving him food. <laughs> and he's like, look, you killed my guy, kill yours. Now we're even. And Madame Lee is just so non flush She's like, aha, I see you are a astute businessman. <laughs> <laughs> and then this was like the third time that uh, Plex had uh, their eight advertisements oh, in a row. Oh, Jesus. This got really old really quick. Yeah, so many... Plex, stop turning guys, into freebie. It's the time of year where it's all these stupid fucking political ads about... Oh, God. Oh, why, why is technology coming from our children? Is Biden going to protect us? Protect our borders from China? Like, what? Oh, my God. You guys, there are three different Utah candidates who are going to protect Utah's borders from China. What fucking border do we share with China? The, Which fucking border? Hey, the down border. They're going to dig right up from under us. You mean like sushi tries to dig down to that? It's, it's good. sushi. It's the real Chinese Red operative? Dawn, babe. They're just going to come right up like like carpenter ants. And just... Guys, they don't care about you. They do not care about Utah. They do not care. They already own you guys. Sorry. I mean, there's also that. That's why they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're barely something in a box that's been in storage for three years to them. Anyway. So... <laughs> Five years back, it's been five. Five years, I don't know. <laughs> uh, where are we at? Uh, political ads, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Mr. T's like, all right, cool. Now that we're doing this, uh, yeah, I, I need these two guys killed. And uh, they're like, okay, yeah, we take care of that for you, Mr. T. And so then uh, her assistant guy like takes the, the two pictures Mr. T gave him of like the guys need to be killed. They go up the stairs. I swear God, half this movie's going up and down those stairs. Oh, uh, easily. But in like one of the bedrooms upstairs, I guess the three death machines are sharing a bedroom. Yeah. And the guy just kind of walks in. That's what's great about zombies, babe. So you can just bunk them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all buck beds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the kinds of the pictures like, all right, here's our next two targets. Oh, that's right. He also hands them like the uh, like like two red Buddhas or whatever little statues. Yeah. So I guess that's their calling card or whatever. He's like, and remember, no witnesses. No. So then we tuck to uh, cut to karate class, <laughs> and, <gasps> and, and yeah, 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 yeah. And then the 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 Asian guy from earlier that you know was in the sniper rifle or whatever. He comes walking around. And he's got one of the Buddhas in his hand. He's like, "Hey, when you guys lose this." Anyone? Huh? No? All right. Well, I guess it's mine now. Anyway, let's continue with our katas or whatever. Like, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that's right. He, like, picks two guys to, like, you know, get, gives them some bows to start fighting and stuff like that. And while these guys are fighting with, you know, the, the, the sticks or whatever, bow, bow staffs, um, <laughs> we're not focusing on the fight. We're, like, slowly zooming in on this... <laughs> This goofy motherfucker who's, like, sitting front row like it's his first day of class watching him kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, I'm like, okay, I guess maybe this is our main character we're gonna be, you know, we're, we're already a good 30 minutes into the movie. I'm glad we're introducing a character. But he, but we see that he notices something and he sees the three death machines, like, standing just, like, outside of the window, which, okay, they're standing outside of the window Babe, yeah. was this on the first floor? Because I swear when they escaped, they had to go down the stairs and stuff like that, right? I think it was upstairs. Yeah. So they're yeah. outside, like, the windows. I guess they rappel down or something or just jumped up there because they're death machines. I don't know. But, yeah, they come in blasting through the window, shh, jumping in. And, I, like, they just fucking slay dozens of these dudes with like they, they, they pull swords like off of the walls and stuff and just chop these motherfuckers like this entire class of like 30 students they're just chopping through these fuckers and they, like some are like trying to run away and they like cut them off on the stairwell and start chopping them um and we see the guy that it was focusing on earlier uh he 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 like gets knocked down and like is like reaching for a sword but he gets and then, up again yeah, exactly. But then he, his arm gets chopped off like, ah, like right at the elbow. Ah. And then uh, Ho Long or whatever, like the main, the master of this dojo or whatever, he's, he's got a sword and he's like at least able to like block a couple things. But then he's like trying to run and they're like, you know, corral him or whatever. And he like strikes a pose like he's about to like Super Saiyan or whatever, like swinging his arms out. And his sword cuts into the power box. Yeah. Like the, like the circuit breaker. And so he's like. Ah! This is one of the more fun kills it in this really movie. Is. I won't lie. Because it's like. Oh shit. Oh shit. Master Long's going to fucking dice. He's. <laughs> oh, never mind. He just fucking died accidentally. Oh shit. That's kind of cool. High voltage. Yeah. And so. And so then the guys are like. They, like, look around and, like, you know, just dozens of bodies. Like, like it's <laughs> that scene in The Protector. Just dead guys all around. And then, so they just walk out. And, but, but they, but as they're walking away, the, the guy that got his arm chopped off and was the focus earlier, mm-hmm. we see he's still, like, breathing. Like, he's just kind of twitching a little bit or whatever. Like, <sighs> So then, uh, yeah, the cops show up and they see the carnage and they're like, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> this is crazy well we got one survivor maybe when he comes to we can uh talk to him blah 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 so then we go to the police station and okay <laughs> look <laughs> look usually uh, like the the cops in the 70s or whatever it's like ah, oh, you're a loose cannon but you get results like that kind of shit this one is so focused on whether uh this lieutenant forester and uh fuck i forget the name of his, his partner or whatever but the, the black partner yeah. uh there's like oh the captain's gonna be on your ass if you don't do that hr class that we're supposed to be taking <laughs> like what what but i got all these reports and stuff i need to do i can't just go to the hr class like well i already did mine so maybe he'll put <laughs> me on the case like ah, this is so stupid oh, son of a bitch so then uh we go to the hospital and uh, we find out the guy the the, the, the witness uh his name's frank thomas you know, like the the White Sox slugger from the nineties. No one. All right. So, <laughs> Steve, you're the only sports nerd you know, apparently. Nerds, nerds, nerds. But uh, but they're like talking to him, like, hey, so would you be able to like describe it so someone could like draw a picture of them? I'll never forget their faces. All right, cool. That that the, uh, that's actually very helpful. We'll just get the you know get the artist in here, and he's like, and if I ever see them again, I'll kill them. And like. Well, look, uh, don't go around killing people. Like, there's already plenty of dead people for this week. That's a that's a lot more paperwork we don't need. But then, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the cops, like, leave or whatever. Like, oh, we'll let you get some rest. We'll get the artist here in a little while, and we'll take your statements and blah, 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 right? And they go by, like, the, the nurse's station. The nurse is like, uh, sir, sir, I know you said, uh, you know, no one gets past the guard to see Mr. Thomas, but uh, what about gifts? Because someone left this for him, and it's one of the red Buddhas or whatever. And like, huh, that's fucking weird. Yeah. Then we cut back to the mansion, and the assistants like talking to the 
the the death machines or whatever, and he's like, <laughs> "You fools! You left a witness. You must finish him. Finish him." Yep. So now it's nighttime at the hospital, and uh, this nurse uh, walks in and sees Frank, and you know she's she, she's being really nice to him, like, "Hey, buddy, how's it going? You need you hungry? You need anything?" And of course, Frank's just a pissy little bitch. He goes, oh fuck! You're, I'm hideous. You have to have a I fucking hook on my hand. And she's like, "No, no, they have like prosthetic plastic ones." And I'm no, like, that would hand. never work for me. Yeah. And uh, we we see the guard like outside the door. He's like dozing off or whatever. Um, but he but there's uh this we see Black Death Machine dressed as an orderly pushing this uh, gurney or whatever with like a you know dead body under a sheet or whatever. Uh, but he walks. We, we watch in real time as he walks all the way slowly down the hall pushing this thing and the, the guard guy's like watching him like, hmm, what's that guy doing? His job maybe? I don't know. Mm. But then he like turns the corner so he's like, okay, cool. And then immediately we see him coming back the other way and we see the, the white death machine has joined him <laughs> uh, dressed as a doctor, like with a stethoscope and everything. Yeah. And they're just like kind of mumbling back and forth or whatever, like, whoa, 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 whoa. and the guard's like, huh, interesting. And then they stop right in front of the guard, and he's like, "What? Uh, hi, what, what's going on? And then the Asian one pops up under the sheet with a sword and, yeah! <laughs> Swipe. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I swear he, he cut at him with a sword, but apparently he just backhanded the guard. Apparently. Right? Like, it was a weird cut because we just see him, like, laying on the ground, like, oh, he's knocked out, but he's not, like, decapitated or anything. Down, I don't know. But he gets up again. Uh, but yeah, so so the cop, <laughs> the cop, like, gets up because, yeah, he get, he's got backhanded and he gets up, pulls his gun, and just plow, 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 plow. And, like, like, he shoots the, I, I think it was the white uh, death machine, like, a couple times, and he keeps, like, getting up <laughs> and then, like, you get shot again, fall down. He is up again. He ain't ever gonna keep him down. And then he like <laughs> stabs the cop through a pillow. Oh no, that's right. He, he like again like backhands the cop out of the way. Goes into the the room where Frank is and just starts stabbing at a bunch of stab, pillows. Stab, stab, stab. Pillows on the bed because like obviously there's not a guy in there. This may be the worst movie ever, but you can see that. <laughs> so the cops like back out again, or you know back up outside as they're all like leaving. And with the fourth time, he, he finally decides, like, well, I better shoot him in the head now. And he shoots the white death machine in the head. And he lets out this scream, like, <laughs> And then we just cut to Madam Lee. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> did he, is he dead? Like, is he going to turn inside out into some sort of dragon? Like, I don't know what that scream was all about, right? Well, he got shot in the face, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, it, we so we cut to Madam Lee, and the assistant guy comes up, and it's like, one of our death machines has, uh, is either dead or has been captured. <laughs> and, and, you know, the assistant's telling her, telling her and she just fucking slaps him. And like, and like, well, you better fucking find out or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she goes to, like, slap the, the, the black death machine. And he, of course, catches that fucking hand before it slaps him. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit. Is he, are, they, <gasps> are they losing their zombie powers over them or whatever? I don't know. We'll see. So Are they that, breaking the conditioning? Right. So then we find out where Frank is. Apparently he got moved to, uh, I think it was a different hospital they were saying. Like, uh, never yeah. hospital down the street, but he's fine. Um, and the lieutenant's like, hey, our plan worked. <laughs> okay, cool, thanks. Um, oh, that's right. And then uh, Madam Lee, she goes to her bedroom. Oh, and the Black my. Death Machine's in there. And she's like, you know you are forbidden to be here. And then she, like... Like, it's basically just, like, candle lit in there. Like, she has a couple candles lit. And she just fucking bare hands the candle to put it out. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. What's about to happen here? Uh, but then it just cuts. It just ends. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> so, yeah, the the lieutenant, like, is talking to Frank or whatever. And he's like, hey, we're going to move you again. Because that seemed to work last time. As long as we keep you moving, they can't find you and kill you, right? Oh, and uh, we talked to your boss, and he says you still got a job at the bar if you ever want it back. And, and, and you know, he just lo lost his hand or arm or whatever. I don't know. It, it, was, it, it, it was like halfway in the forearm, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, like, it was kind of weird because it's really like whenever it shows him again, it just he just has like a black glove on. Yeah. And, yeah. But, but yeah, I, th I think there was like a scene or whatever where they're like trying to show that it was... You know, yeah. like, halfway up the forearm. I don't know. 
But he's like, oh, that's that's what the world needs is a one-handed bartender. Blah, blah, blah. Every bar needs one. Yeah. Uh, so at the police station, uh, they have the, the white death machine they captured or whatever. And they uh, got him in the back room for questioning. And he's he's acting like he's out of it. Like, you know, obviously he took a bullet to the head. So he's kind of kind of groggy, Ooh. I guess. But the, you know, Lieutenant Forrester and his partner, apparently they're off the case. Because they fucked it up or something before or whatever. Fucked it up! And so this other... Oh, no, no. That's right. They're off the case because they haven't done the HR class. Oh, and they, have, right. and they haven't filed And they haven't filed report. the paperwork. Like, oh yeah, where did this... I hear about this guy getting caught? That's right, the fucking newspaper, because I haven't gotten your report yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that captain. Oh, oh shit. We also have to talk about, okay. So the, the captain's ca- afro. The captain's afro and the makeup in this police station oh, scene. God. because The it makeup is, is bad. Every, every single actor has the wrong shade. And they all look like zombies. But particularly the captain, they straight up just put like olive green paint on this poor African American man, and it looks bad. It yeah. looks bad. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're like, "Oh man, why did you take us off the case?" We're like, well, you haven't done the HR class, um, you know. And I'm not looking for a repeat of these karate school murders, blah blah blah. So I don't know. Jenkins here is going to take care of it. He's like, "Hey, sorry guys, you got to take the class." <laughs> I mean, I want that report by the end of the day. All right. All right. So. Oh, man. Okay, so Jenkins, or, you know, this rando guy, and his partner, they're leading, you know, White Death Machine into basically an office. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like, like a junior VP or something is in this office. Yeah. Like, like the assistant junior VP is in this office <laughs> otherwise. And uh, the, the Jenkins guy is like, hey, uh, uncuff him. And he's like, the fuck I am? This guy killed like 30 people. That, those right. karate murders. <laughs> and he's like, all right, well, at least read him his rights or whatever. Okay, cool. And this guy pulls out the paper and reads the rights off of, like, a receipt in his pocket. Yep. Meanwhile, White Death Machine, he starts, like, hunching over slightly. And like, oh, this guy looks like he's sick. I'm going to uncuff him. And I'm like, what? <sighs> Why? And then instantly this guy, this White Death Machine is, like, whooping he, he basically goes full malignant in this fucking oh, police yeah. station. He is, like, cry-chopping motherfuckers. He's neck-snapping. Everyone's trying to shoot him, and they end up shooting other cops. Like, it's it's goddamn chaos in this room. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, that's right. Activate Hero Shield. Like, he grabs a cop as, like, they a little, oh, like, four yes. of them and toss him aside. Uh, like, he climbs, like, the, on the outside of the window and, like, down onto a portico and, like, rolls off and starts running. Um, I don't, oh, that's right. Uh, and then we see the, uh, the, the director, <laughs> he pulls up in a cop car and I swear to God, he like opens the, the door on this cop car mm-hmm. and he kicks the driver so hard he goes into the passenger seat because yes. apparently he just slides right in and drives off. And I'm like, Wait. but there's no more passenger. Passenger yeah. not there, Steve. Yeah. Passenger yeah. Not yeah. It's not there. like the passenger flew out the other side or anything. He, like, he, he flew out the side window. No, he didn't. Because he is, did. nope. That's the only option we have. Because he's not in the car. I assume he car. went like through a hole in the door or something. <laughs> like a, not a, not a little doggy car. door in the cop car. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, he's driving off. Um, and then, uh, oh, that's right. He drives, and then like within a hundred yards, he crashes into another car. Oh yeah. Like it's fucking Pulp Fiction. Like he just hit Marcellus Wallace, and then immediately hit. The car, but uh, but yeah, they but then you know the cops like, oh shit, let's go. They like surround the car and he's gone. So then you may be wondering where would he go? Well, apparently he just wanders over to a diner somewhere, and uh, he just sits at a table. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the owner of this diner, this this old guy, uh, could have been played by like James Cromwell or some shit, right? Or you know. Oh, oh shit! No, he, he's like the old guy from a uh, Con Air. The oh, drugs will be the end of you, son. <laughs> like that kind of guy. But uh, he walks over and he sits next to him. And he's like, "Look, uh, here, here's a burger for you, sir. Look, it's okay, no charge. No charge. But he, all you gotta do is trust in God, son. Here, I got these pamphlets for you if you'd like to know more. <laughs> How and, does this place stay in business? Right. <laughs> and so yeah, white death machine. He's like eating the burger and kind of him looks like. Oh, like not saying anything just whatever all right um but then these bikers come in 
Oh, and these bikers are, even by like biker and movie standards, are kind of like, why bad. would you? Why would you be scared of these guys a little bit? It's bad. Yeah, the one guy pulls out like a switchblade comb and thinks he's a badass, but they're just harassing everybody. Like, there's girls at the, a girl at the bar is like on a date or whatever, and they're like, hey, sweet. Hey, sweetie, won't you come with me? Uh, it, it, they're like taunting like they're fucking third graders, right? And then uh, I'd sure like a piece of that ass. Yeah. Oh, but then they see uh, White Death Machine, who's you know basically just wearing a what, fucking tank top and yeah, a sweatpants. men's undershirt. Yeah, as men's the undershirt. Cops we're calling it. Yeah. And they're like, this guy, you, you a cop? You a cop? You running from the law, man? I think this guy's an undercover cop. He smells like a pig. Wink, 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 I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Hey, buddy, I'm talking to you. Like, this goes on for oh, entirely too fucking long. Too fucking long. And then the radio starts up. Oh, God, the fucking radio, yeah. So, <laughs> there's like this gospel radio song kind of going like, Well, the Lord gonna take my shovel and make me, take me to China. I don't know. Some stupid shit, right? But there, but... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not that far. Like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, fight breaks out, you know, because he, like, touches the white death machine. And they're like, wah, wah, wah. But then, like, so the fight starts. And he takes out, like, two people. And then out of left field, some biker with a stool fucking clocks the white yeah. death machine and, like, knocks him out. Uh, but then the other two death machines show up. Oh, shit. And that's when the radio kicks on. And <laughs> If you believe in God, here, we'll make sure he does right by you. That's right. And I'm going to do oh, it to China. No, I, I have it written down here. The here we go. Do the, do, do the deal from the floor. Like, do the deal from the floor. Do the deal from the floor. Blah, blah, blah. And then, like, some guy comes in like, Hi, I'm a... I'm baby, baby, baby Billy Bobby's Bible bumpers or whatever, and I'm here to sell you the world's smallest Bible for five ninety nine plus shipping and handling. This thing could be yours, fresh out of Nashville, Tennessee, or whatever the fuck, right? Um, but yeah, eventually, yeah, all the bikers get like fucking knocked out, and then yeah, the the death machines they just drive off. Cut to Madame Lee, and uh, you know she's like. Okay, we have problem with the bank VP or whatever. Uh, but we can get to him through his daughter. And and then we cut to, the, I guess, the daughter, like, on the phone, like, um, with the bank VP. And she's like, oh, daddy, yes, I'm just here at college. I'm just getting moved in. Everyone seems so nice. Blah, blah, blah. And as soon as she hangs up, there's literally death machines there, like, scooping <laughs> her up and, like, walking off with her. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, they don't walk off with her. No. <laughs> they walk her to the bed. <laughs> and then we see the assistant guy just, like, with the camera, just start taking pictures. So then the assistant guy, Mr. Lou, uh, he goes to the bank. <laughs> and he's like, yes, I'd like to speak to Mr. Johnson. <laughs> you are bank vice president, yes? Yeah, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really busy. Uh, my my secretary didn't tell me why you're here. He's like, that's okay, just have a seat. Here, look at these pictures. And uh, apparently it's pictures of his daughter in very compromising positions with the death machines. Yeah. And he's like, what? Why would you? Why, why, would, why you would you do this? this? Blah, blah, blah. Look, it's okay. All you have to do is resign from the, <laughs> resign as the president of the bank. <laughs> You know, like in uh, fucking uh, Fateful Findings. And then recommend this man and like slides a picture, I assume, <laughs> with like name poorly or whatever. Like, that's all you have to do. And he's like, uh, otherwise these pictures will be given to the newspaper and you'll never live it down and blah, blah, blah. What, the, you fucking destroyed my daughter? I don't know. He's like, no, no, I can't do that. And then, you know, Mr. Louie pulls out a gun. He's like, look. <laughs> We could have done this the easy way, but we'll do it the hard way. <laughs> and handcuffs him to a filing cabinet or whatever, yeah. like right next to his desk. And then he pulls out... He pulls out a red Buddha statue. <laughs> but babe... With dynamite. Yes. <laughs> with the nestled. with the sticks of dynamite taped to it taped and a little it, but clock. Like nestled in its little, like, crossed legs. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little peaceful Buddha holding, like, four <laughs> sticks of dynamite. <laughs> And <laughs> which, by the way, this scene gets Steve every single time. Yeah, it's he, like, so fucking good. 
It's a Buddha every time. It's like a hand grenade, guys. No. But, uh, <laughs> it's, a hand it's a Buddha bomb! <laughs> And, and, and I like how Mr. Lou, like, sets it next to, like, the picture of his daughter that he has, like, on his desk or whatever. <laughs> and, okay. And Mr. Lou just, you know, sets the timer and, like, leaves. Yep. And uh, the the bank VP or whatever, he's kept to this filing cabinet. I'm like, there's not a filing cabinet on Earth that, you know. That like, could keep me like, in like, like, he's pulling on it, like, ah, I won't move. And, like, the filing cabinet's about to tip over just because it's, like, flimsy tin or, you know, like, aluminum yeah. or something. Yeah, because it's a filing cabinet. Yeah. I don't care if that thing is filled with lead bricks. I will yeah, drag exactly. it out. Exactly. <laughs> I will gnaw my I will own arm off. tip it over, cause a commotion. Like, you know, you, you can do it, right? I, but, I will but he's just out, of that shit. <laughs> he's just out of our... Uh, I, I think he was able to, like, reach the phone. He, like, yeah, he wasn't he was able, able to get the phone. He was able, he was able to reach the phone. his phone. But he, like, calls the secretary and yeah. he's like, look, uh, Sheila, I need you to get the fuck... The you, keys you, for get some the help. The keys. Cabinet. Get the keys for the filing cabinet. Oh, God. And, you know, the secretary's, like, out, like, you know, checking all of her drawers and stuff. And, like, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, I can't find it. Wait, I think they might be in your desk. And, <laughs> and of course, he's like, oh, shit. And he's like... <laughs> And, like, I, I guess he needed a key to, like, get to the key of the filing <laughs> cabinet in one of the drawers or whatever. And so he starts freaking out. He's like, oh, my God. And the bomb hits zero. <gasps> and then, okay. So they're like, nothing happens. But then there's, like, a gong noise. But I thought it was just, like, the background music or whatever. Because it was kind of just doing it the whole time. Like, whoosh. And I'm like, wait, is that supposed to be the bomb making that noise or whatever? <laughs> Boo! <laughs> the fucking, we see the whole fucking like front of the bank just <laughs> gone. Everyone's dead. Yep. And then we cut to the fireplace at Madame Lee's, and the uh, Mister Lou's like kind of like they are both killed now, Mrs. Le- Madame Lee. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so then we cut back to see, I wonder what Frank's up to. You know, it's been a while since we've seen him being a whiny little bitch, right? Yeah. Well, he's back at the, the scene of the crime, you might say. The dojo. I still like all the fucking outlines of the bodies and stuff on the ground and all that. And, uh, you know, he's getting a flashback to like his arm getting cut off and shit like that. But then, oh, that nurse is coming to join him too. The cr- the scene of the crime. And she's like, hey. Uh, I was wondering if you'd like to have some lunch, uh, you know, or, or, you know, that's right. She's like, what are you doing here? I thought you said you weren't going to come here again. That kind of thing. I thought we were supposed to have lunch. Like, uh, um, uh, how's the job going? Like, blah, blah, blah. Basically, he's like, I'm just here on my lunch break from the bar, like next door or whatever. Uh, I quit school. My dream was to be an ossifer. I swear to God, he said ossifer. He said ossifer. But I can't do that when I only got one hand and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, whatever. I'm just going to feel pity for myself. And the nurse is like, well, I've got the next few days off. And look. Oh, like, I, I'm sorry. I'd really like to hang out. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no one asked you to hang out with the fucking cripple. Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, fine. Goodbye, Frank. And then so she starts walking away. And then she stops, turns like, wait. Are you not going to do a thing right now? Are you not going to try and stop me? I see this is going to be harder than it looks. And he's just like, Jesus Christ, leave me alone. Yeah, get the fucking hit now. Uh, But but, and he's like, I I don't know. They're like, hey, maybe we should just get some coffee. Okay, yeah, that'd be nice. Cut to the topless bar. Yeah, cut to the bar he works at. Where apparently, okay, guys, I don't know if you've been to one of these bars before. Uh, the, here in Ogden, when I was a teenager, this yeah. is what the lighthouse lounge was like, but they moved and they're a lot better now. But, uh, it's one of those where there's like the bar and there's like two tables and on the far end, there's like one pole where there's like a dancer, you know, like it's, it's like a stage that's like two feet up or whatever. Yeah. And there's the girl that can barely not slit her wrist as she's like dancing around <laughs> to go-go music or whatever. Yeah. Not, not, not a fantastic sight. Hello? All right, we're good. You're saying Everything's great. Right? Everything's great. Everything is cake. So. <laughs> it's true, though. And, uh. Everything is cake and AI. And, and I like how the, the nurse is, like, talking to Frank or whatever, and basically is like, are, are you sure, like, this dancer is a good idea? Like, yeah, the owner thought it'd help with business, but 
I I don't know, man. Like, it doesn't seem to be doing much. They just get the same two drunks here every day. Uh, Meanwhile, a ship captain walks in. Yeah, a ship captain. An like actual a, ship captain, yeah. like... Somebody just found this wardrobe and was like, you have a beard, put it on. Oh, that's right. Uh, okay, yeah. And, and she's also asking him, like, hey, wh- so what are your future plans and blah, blah, blah. And he's like... Look, man, I'm just trying to, like, get my shit together. Yeah. I quit school. I took my fucking job back. Like, what else do you fucking want from me? Yeah. And then this is when the uh, stripper's like, uh, hey, Frank, I get some change for the jukebox? And he just yells back, not now, Sharon. As they're, like, you know, trying to have a date or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Um, hey, how about I, I get you a beer? Okay, that'd be nice. Thanks, Frank. And so she's sitting there when, and yeah, the, uh, the owner comes on, comes over now and sits with her and is like, oh, you're good for him. He's, he was such a sad sack of shit there for a while, but you're giving him life, man. But I was expecting to like pull out like, by the way, (laughs) I got these pamphlets for you if you'd like to, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. But yeah, then the old, uh, sailor man or whatever, he's at the jukebox and he's like, fucking jukebox won't work. And he's like, oh, okay, well, hold on a sec. Let me see if I can do anything. It, and he's just like whacking on this fucking jukebox, like, uh, 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 unga, uh, uh, I want my quarter. Yeah, he's like, cool, come, come on over. I'll give you your, your money back, you know, your fucking quarterback or whatever. <laughs> and then he goes, and the beer sucks too, and fucking breaks the beer bottle like over right. the owner's head. I want my dollar back. And then full out fucking brawl is like all the six people in this thing are like throwing stools at the fucking mirrors. And they like pick up Frank and toss his ass and. I don't know. He gets fucked. Frank gets laid out a couple of times, right? And even on the way out, when they're like, well, I guess there's nothing else to destroy in here, he ends up throwing a chair through the, the fucking window and shit. And I'm like, cool. So then, I don't know, the nurse just fucking stares for a while at uh, at Frank because he's laid out on the bar. <laughs> right? And she's just like having a flashback to, I guess, earlier when they were kissing. And then, like, post coitus, she's like, so what do we do now, Frank? Uh, 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 okay, so I was thinking that was a flashback because, you know, right? it's like fading into it as she's staring at his basically dead body, right? Nope, apparently it was later that night. They just went back, started kissing, yep. straight to Pound Town. Like, what yeah. now? We should get away. You know, start new somewhere. And I'm like, oh, wait, this isn't a flashback? Okay, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, they, uh, they load up the car. We're going to go on a road trip. They drive off down uh, Route 66, I assume. I don't fucking know. But then, uh, I don't know, we cut to Madame Lee. And uh, she's basically like, Mr. T is on the way to give pain me <laughs> now that we have cure for him. And, 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 but she's basically like, remember, no witnesses. We need you to take him out. And I'm like, okay. And this is where the music goes to like synth fart music for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh yeah so if yeah frank and the nurse they're driving along like about to hit the freeway when all of a sudden they see the three death machines driving a car going the other direction he's like that's them that's the motherfuckers right there man let's go get them or no oh, that's right he fucking uh they, they, they get the license plates like 605 cwj and he pulls over and he's like, all right, I need you to get out and call the cops. <laughs> call <laughs> Lieutenant Forrester. He'll know everything. Give him the get, give him the license plate number. He'll know what you're talking about. And so, yeah, so she calls uh, Lieutenant, gives him the number. He's like, all right, cool. We're going to put a tracer on, which I assume is like putting on an APB. Like if you see yes, this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I never heard put a tracer on before, but unless it was like, pew, cool. Now there's a tracer <laughs> on it, you know? Right. Oh, that's right. And like, like the lieutenant's like ready to like get up and go, and the captain's like, "Where the fuck's that report I've been asking you about for the last four days?" <laughs> you know what, Captain? Screw you. Okay. And he runs off, and the captain's just kind of like, ah. "Well, I admire that guy. I don't know, like fucking, like whatever." So, uh, Frank, he's following the death machines in their car to uh, the 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 airfield. And again, we see the plane landing in real time. <laughs> this this movie has so many different sets. Yeah, guys, I have like typically as many notes as I do for a three hour movie for yeah. this one, and this is maybe eighty minutes. But so yeah, plane lands. M- Mister T like drops off. He's like, you know, like, hey, here's the money. Thanks again for everything. All right, cool. And then like, you know, 
gets back in the plane and is like turn you know turning around to get a good run at the runway blah 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 but then we see the death machines they pop that trunk they pull out that rocket launcher <laughs> Boom! Blowing up Mr. T's plane. No! No, Mr. T! The real hero of this movie. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Frank, he's watching and like just, oh my God. And then, uh, yeah, the death machines like drive off. <laughs> so then Frank runs back to the car, starts following him, and follows him all the way back to Madame Lee's mansion. Yeah, back to the mansion. Yep. And then uh, in, uh, in the stairway, you know, Madame Lee's coming down and the death machines come home. Death machines are going up, and they like kind of nudge, just basically nudge her out of the way, like walk right past her, like she's not even fucking there. And she's like, she goes to talk to Mister Loon, is like, I think now is that time to take care of them. And so Mister Loon pulls out his gun. Yeah. <laughs> he walks up the stairs. We see him open the door and go in their room. Pop, pop, pop. And Frank's like, like hears it outside because he's like, you know, taking the place. What the hell is going on? In and there? he walks to the door. Slowly. So slowly. To the door. Guys, I'm not joking. It's like four minutes oh of God. him slowly advancing like, on the door. like each, the music is playing. Each right? step takes him a full minute to like comprehend. And he slowly opens the door. Oh, and he's got a black glove on now to indicate his Oh, yeah, did, hand. yeah to indicate he's got a rubber hand or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he slowly walks inside. And he slowly walks upstairs. And it was around the time he get, was going up the staircase that I was like, I think the music just got dropped into the bathtub. <laughs> because it was like... <laughs> and then he goes to the door. And he opens it. And it's Madame Lee with a fucking Kitana. Yeah, yeah, yeah! yeah! Just swinging it wildly, chasing him down the stairs like he rolls backwards down the <laughs> stairs and shit. He goes, I'm not sure he was supposed to fall like that. Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but he's like running. She's like just coming down. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. And he runs out that front door. And the, we see the lieutenant and his partner pulling up in the cop car. And Madame Lee coming out with a katana. Plow, 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 plow. <laughs> Cops drop his ass. And now we see the cops. <gasps> they go inside. And they slowly go upstairs. And they go in the room. <gasps> and they open the door. <gasps> and Mr. Lou is lying on the ground. <gasps> Babe, what happens? What happens, Steve? We cut to the three death machines dressed in nice suits at the airport. And they're like, <laughs> here are your tickets to Rio de Janeiro, gentlemen. And then we see them walking. That's right. Freeze frame. The end. No credits. Bop, 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 bop. Babe, would you recommend Death Machines? 1,000%. This movie is One fucking amazing. 1,000%. It is. It is fantastic. Oh and babe, God. spoilers, I think we're in the minority. Really? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Look. How? Uh, I mean, we'll talk about it in a bit, but uh, yeah, guys, uh, I don't know. It's a dumb, it's barely, a, I mean, it's a martial arts movie. Obviously, yeah. we have like a couple of fight scenes where, I don't know. Swords chop 30 dudes in half, basically. <laughs> and, you know, a couple cool stunts, like, you know, going down buildings and jumping onto, you know, whatever's. <laughs> the dummy kill. <laughs> Rocket launchers. <laughs> all that shit. But, uh, yeah, I'd recommend it. It's on Tubi, but, yeah, watch it on Plex. It's free. That's free, too. Sling TV, I don't know the quality, but, you know, it's a 70s movie. Oh, how about you, babe? What do you think about this movie? It's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's Everyone should watch this movie. Mandatory watching. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we're going to take a quick commercial break. What? Oh, but when we come back, <gasps> we have more beer. What? Fun facts. <gasps> and what we learn from Death Machines. Death Machines. Oh, it's such a clutch off-season pickup, Dave. I was worried we'd bring back the same team. I meant those blackout motorized shades. Blinds.com made it crazy affordable to replace our old blinds. Hard to install? No, it's easy. I installed these and then got some from my mom. She talked to a design consultant for free and scheduled a professional measure and install. Hall of Fame son. They're the number one online retailer of custom window coverings in the world. Blinds.com is the GOAT. Go to Blinds.com for 40% off site-wide. Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do, like, four of these. 
I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. So, you want to be a marketer. It's easy. You just have to score a ton of leads and figure out a way to turn them all into customers. Plus, manage a dozen channels, write a million blogs, and launch 100 campaigns all at once. When that's done, simply make your socials go viral and bring in record profits. No sweat. Okay, fine. It's a lot of sweat. But with HubSpot's AI-powered marketing tools, launching benchmark-breaking campaigns is easier than ever. Get started at HubSpot.com slash marketers. Have you ever watched a movie and thought to yourself, what were they thinking? Because we sure have... So much so that we named our podcast after it. What were they thinking? Starring me, Nathan. And Brendan. Every week we take a bad to questionable movie and unpack it so you don't have to. And then sometimes we ate your cues in our mailbag. No big whoop. Yeah, no big whoop at all. So that's What Were They Thinking? You can find us on your favorite podcatcher or follow us on the World Wide Web on Twitter and Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Who the hell says World Wide Web anymore? This guy. So, uh, yeah, see you soon. Wave at microphone. I love the smell of movies in the morning. There's no feeling in podcasts. There's no feeling in podcasts. This podcast will be quite operational when your friends subscribe. Feels. Real feels. Not the feels! Not the feels! Out of all the podcasts I've encountered, Real Feels was the most human. Hey, it's Drew. And Nathan. And Jack. Hey guys, and we're the Real Feels Podcast. We come to you every other Wednesday with a brand new movie of a different genre every single time. So make sure to catch us on iTunes, Podbean, and any other podcatcher out there. You're the realist. And the feelist. Come to yeah-ha! Did you ever go on vacation with your family and hope the dance instructor would fall in love with you? No, but I did think a guy with a giant boombox playing Peter Gabriel outside my window in the middle of the night meant true and undying love. Listen to our podcast, Happily Ever Aftermath, where we revisit these movies and it turns out they weren't the best ideas. What were you thinking? You can find our podcast, Happily Ever Aftermath, on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or your favorite podcatcher. You can also tweet at us at H-E-A-M-C-A-S-T, Heemcast. Hey, I heard you like movies. I heard you like to hustle. I heard you like podcasts. Well, guess what? There's a podcast for you out there called The Home Video Hustle. Damn right. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I put a bunch of movies in a bag, and PJ picks one out at random. And then we just watch it. We talk about it for maybe like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Whatever we feel like doing, wherever the conversation leads us. But do we actually talk about the movie? Most of the time. Ah. Tangents galore. Yes. So believe me, we may be a movie podcast, but it's not always about movies. We might talk about video games. Mm-hmm. Music. music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the big one, music. Uh, sometimes we might get a little bit of politicalness in there. Yes. Sometimes we may just, oh, we know what we like to do. We like to tell stories, PJ. Ah, yes. I am the master storyteller <laughs> yes. of the podcast realm. <laughs> Undefeated. <laughs> so if you like to hear about movies, video games, whatever foolishness comes to our mind, the most random stuff you can think of, check out the Home Video Hustle. You can find us on the Stitchers, yes, the Google Play, yes, Apple Podcasts, what else? Podbean, what else? Podcast Addict, goddamn, all that. Ain't no reason you can't get your hustle on. We everywhere, worldwide, baby. Hustle, mother. Hustle. Hey, we can't cuss in the promo, PJ. Ah. We gotta be family friendly. There may be podcasts out there that don't want us here to say. Ah. 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 Good fun stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> f- you. Yeah. No, don't, don't run the listeners away, PJ. Ah, I'm sorry. But this is going kind of long. Yes. So we'll end this and say, hey, check out the Home Video Hustle every Friday on all the various podcast outlets. Peace. Peace. Hi there, I'm Galen Howard, also known as that mustache guy from that one Weezer video where I eat a bunch of cannoli, and you're listening to everything I learned from movies. And we're back! Oh my god, Steve, those are the greatest ads that I've ever added in the history of adding! Oh, she said it! They get better every week! Uh, babe, I don't know about you. Oh I'm, I'm a little thirsty. Oh, I'm still sober. Oh, yeah, well, let's change that. Well, let's fix that now. Ooh, uh, uh, do you have it over there? Uh, 
from Abita Brewing in New Orleans, Louisiana. We have Turbo Dog Brown Ale. Turbo Dog is a dark brown ale brewed with pale, caramel, and chocolate malts and Willamette hops. This combination gives the brew its rich body and color and a sweet chocolate toffee-like flavor. Uh, I'm going to guess 5, yep, 5.6%. Yeah. And Matup? I'll, I'll be prepared to suck head on this one. Matup? Oh, it's soft. Nice. Here it goes. Yeah. Steve's sucking head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm. And the poor. This is a beautiful yeah. brown ale. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah, nice chocolatey smell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it smells. Yeah, a little yeah just roasty a little, too. little roasty, a little caramel. Nothing overpowering. It's very light, light aroma. It's got your puppy eyes on your friends. Your puppy eyes. Yeah, I mean, nice, smooth, chocolatey. Um. Yeah, not sweet enough to be like like to- toffee flavor, but yeah, little, little caramely notes. But it's a good middle of the road beer. If you just yeah. want like an easy drinking beer, this is your beer. Mm-hmm. See, what was the first time you had Turbo Dog? I think it was with you. All right. Or actually, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was early 2000s. Like first time I went to New Orleans. Okay. But I don't know. First time I like, I was like, oh yeah, like like. I know Turbo Dog was one of your favorites or whatever when yeah. we first started dating. So, and it was rarely available there at uh, the Bevmo and stuff in California. Yeah. Here in Utah, not so much, but you know, occasionally we find it. <laughs> less so, less so. Mm. Yeah, this is delicious beer. That's right. I think I, we got these in the uh, California trip, didn't we? I believe so. Mm. Yeah, Vita Brewing Turbo Dog Brown Ale. Yeah. Well, babe, would you be interested in any fun facts about this movie? I don't know, Steve. Why are they? Super fun facts, because of fun, fun facts. Well, let's find out. All right, babe, Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. No critic reviews for this one. I know, Boo. shocking. What do you think the audience score is? I think you may have given me a hint earlier. My oh, my hopes and dreams hope it's like 85%, but my gut saying I should go with my super generous 17. Babe, what if I told you the audience score for this movie was 7%? Okay, that's just wrong. That's fucking horrible, right? That's just like, wrong. Like, that's, that's like Ghost of Sherwood level. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'm pulling up the reviews now. One moment. <laughs> We're going to review the reviewers. Oh, yeah, and only like 50 reviews, too. Um, <laughs> uh, John M. gives it two stars. Martial arts zombies is all I wanted, and I think I got it. No idea what the hell happened here, but I liked it. But he rated it two star, two out of stars, as they say. Fuck that guy. Uh, four stars definitely drags at some points, but overall I found it to be entertaining and funny by Neil Breen, Anonymous. Yeah, most of these are like three and four stars. Okay, well here's a couple twos. Uh, it's a bit strange, but too dull and confusing to be interesting. Some of the scenes are kind of cool, but the plot doesn't make a lick of sense. Too hard to follow, really? But... <laughs> Brain numbing fun makes Death Machines a slightly memorable experience. Maybe Wait, they, too, ho- too hard to follow. Maybe they saw a different movie? version or something because this right? is pretty fucking simple. Um, full review at Hot Dogs in the Park. Fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, but most of them are, yeah, they just, they're, they're kind of all over the place, but yeah, I guess uh, anything less than four out of stars or whatever is a bad review. Uh, so, yeah, there Alrighty. you go. Uh, any guesses on what the budget for this movie was? Eleven dollars and a six pack. Close seventy thousand dollars. All right, all right. That makes that makes sense. I mean, I mean, there's stunts and stuff, but Babe, yeah. getting a plane isn't cheap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm I'm assuming uh, Mr. T's house was probably like the producer's house that was probably. also the star of the movie. Yeah. And, uh, uh, the okay, this was on IMDb. The aptly named policeman Captain Green was not actually supposed to have a green face. The makeup under fluorescent lights made his face look green. Okay. I think ours was a little touch up because it wasn't quite green. It was just kind of like grayish I or some shit. I specifically said he looked green when we yeah, were talking about but, that section. But, but not like forest green. like it, No, uh, no, but like sick like green. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like grayish just kind of like, oh man, what's wrong with that guy? But yeah. Uh, director Paul Kirizzi, uh, Kiriazzi was also a stunt driver in one scene as he did not want to put anyone at risk. And that's why he played cop who gets his car stolen or whatever. 
Uh, the original Asian killer was to be Kung Fu Kata champion Eric Lee. Who is he? I'm glad you asked. Uh, Who is he? Steve? He has over 40 credits, babe, including <gasps> Wing Kong Hatchet Man in Big Trouble in Little China. Oh! You know exactly who I'm talking about. He's been in a shit ton of stuff. Yeah, exactly. He was going to be the original Asian death machine. But, but, Sam fucking Peckinpah had invited him to work on the Killer Elite, shooting at the exact same time. So Eric took the smaller part of the karate instructor whose dojo was raided. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, he's the, uh, Ho Ho Long or whatever. Ho Long? The guy who runs the dojo that got raided? Oh, 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 Master. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the mysterious mastermind uh, man was kept in the shadows in case there was a sequel so that another actor could fill the role if required. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who is that guy? <laughs> I guess we'll find out in Death Machines 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. Oh, man, Death Machines. Okay, so... The 50th anniversary is coming up here in a little bit. We got time. Who stars in uh, in the sequel? It's going to be set in the 70s still, obviously. Okay. So you can't be immortal. Okay. But I'm thinking, okay, we got we got to think who's going to be involved. We got to, Madame Lee's dead, so we can cross her out. Yeah. Who plays White, uh, white Death Machine? Oh. So he's somebody who's built like a coat camp? Yeah, exactly. A little, a little thing. Oh shit, uh, Chris Pratt. <laughs> but but you know, fat Chris Pratt. <laughs> nah, he's kind of sexist now. And yeah. Weird. Um, I'm trying to think of like we just don't watch any modern low budget kung fu movies. Yeah. No, babe, we're gonna redo this with the cast of Miami Connection. So so guys that are all in their sixties now. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Woody Harrelson as White Death Machine. <laughs> Wesley Snipes as Black Death Machine. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, fucking uh, Jackie Chan as Asian Death Machine. Sold. Yeah, there Sold. we go. Well, baby, we reached the most important part. <gasps> what did we learn from <gasps> Death Machines? Oh. I mean, I learned that when swinging a cantana definitely pay attention if there's an electrical box nearby absolutely <laughs> or cops for that matter or cops yeah. <laughs> uh fuck what i learned uh, i learned uh <laughs> rocket launchers are the cause of and solution to all of life's problems yeah and uh you really got to stay up on those hr things otherwise there may be severe repercussions down the road always file your paperwork right but babe Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. Thank you for having me. Um, I understand you have a social media presence of some sort. I do. You can find me everywhere at Untidy Venus. That's a goddess who's bad at housekeeping. I'm on all the social medias at Untidy Venus. You can also find me every single Saturday down at the Ogden Farmer's Market on 25th Street. Yeah. You can find me. Let's see. This is the end of June. So you can find me at the Huntsville 4th of July Parade. You can find us, uh, oh my god, in August, we are going to be at the Farmer's Market, followed immediately by Pride, followed immediately by Ogden Pride, followed immediately by the Weber County Fair, followed immediately by more Farmer's Market, followed immediately by uh, Craft Lake City, Utah's largest craft show. Yeah, it's going to be great. Woo! But Katie's going to be with us, and I'm sure we'll yes. convince her to be on an episode or two. Special guest Katie Crumpton from Katie Crumpton Art! Yeah. Steve? Where can we find you? Oh, well, you can find me everywhere on all the major podcatchers and everything I learned from movies. Or hit us up directly on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Blueski at E I L F Movies. That's everything I learned from movies. Ah. Uh, so, yeah, I guess until next time, I'm Steve. And I'm Izzy. And this is Everything I Learned from Movies. Night, everybody. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Same <laughs>